This video is about heat and phase changes. So when you go through a phase change, the temperature is constant, but you still add or lose heat. So this is in reference to your heating and cooling curves that we talked about a couple days ago. During the plateau region, that's where those phase changes are going to occur. Along those regions, the temperature remains constant. It's just the time that's changing. And during those plateau regions, that's where you have a phase change, so melting, boiling, solidification, or evaporation. Okay? So again, to go across our phase change, we need to add or lose heat. This isn't temperature. And remember the difference between heat and temperature. Okay? So my change in heat is going to be equal to the mass, the mass given to us in grams. Multiply times the heat of the phase change, since that phase change requires some amount of heat. Now, there's a couple of different types of heats of phase changes. It's shown as an H, capital H, with a subscript. That subscript denoting whether it's fusion, solidification, vaporization, or condensation, just with an F, S, V, or C. Again, this tells us the type of phase change. Sometimes it has a delta sign in front of us saying that there's a change in heat. We want to know what the actual heat was because we're concerned about whether it's being endo or exothermic. Okay. So the different types of phase changes or the heats for the phase change. We're going to focus on water. In your reference packet, you are given the heat of fusion and the heat of vaporization for water. You should take note that the heat of fusion is 334 joules per gram, and the heat of solidification is negative 334 joules per gram. So fusion is where we're melting, solidification is freezing. Notice that they're opposite in sign, one's positive, one's negative. Positive where I'm adding energy to excite my molecules. Negative where I'm taking away energy, energy is being released. Okay. Opposite phase changes. They're going to have opposite signs because of the first law of thermodynamics. Heat of vaporization and heat of condensation. Heat of vaporization is 2,260 joules per gram. Heat of condensation is negative 2,260 joules per gram. Again, they're opposite phase changes. They're going to be opposite in sign but equal in magnitude. Because whatever I give off while I'm vaporizing or boiling, I'm going to take in, excuse me, other way around. Whatever I put into my system during vaporization, so my 2,260 grams per, or joules per gram, I'm going to give off when I'm condensing my negative 2,260 joules per gram. So again, opposite phase changes, first law of thermodynamics. So I use my equation of Q is equal to MH. So this leads me to an example problem. Example problem number four says if two grams of ice melt to liquid, how much energy must have been added to the ice? So I'm told that my ice is going from ice to water, it's melting. Melting is the same as fusion. So I use HF for water, which is 334 joules per gram. I have M of my mass is given to me as 2.0 grams, and I need to locate Q, which is my heat. I use my equation of Q is equal to M change in H, so my change in heat or my fusion. Again, sometimes you'll have the delta sign, sometimes you will not. My Q, my heat, is equal to 2.0 grams of water times 334 joules per gram. 2 times 334 is 668 joules. So again, I had to locate what kind of phase change I was at, what my constant is for that heat of my phase change, and then just plug it into my equation. So I'll give you a moment to check this and to copy this down. Then you'll do practice problem number four. Practice problem number four reads, if 15 grams of liquid water freeze, how much energy must have been added to the ice? 
So I need to locate what kind of phase change is it, and then what is my heat of the phase change for that phase change. Practice problem number five says that if 10 grams of steam condense into liquid water, how much energy must have been released? Here again, I'm going from steam to liquid, so it's condensing, so it tells me what my H is, my heat of phase change. And I solve again for my heat, which is Q, or how much energy, which is Q. For practice number four, you should have gotten the answer of negative 5,000 joules. It's exothermic. For practice problem number five, you should have got Q is equal to 22,600 or 360 joules, and this one is endothermic because you have a positive Q.